Welcome to I, Wobot. Bubbles, water, laws, weeding. Naked Will Smith. Product placement. More product placement. But on a robot which Will pushes away because he hates robots. Well, at least take the fucking package, dipshit. It's Chicago, 2035. They got robots and shit. And a new model coming out that's called the Noise 5. Shia LaBeouf comes along, throws Detective Spoons a ball, which he does not catch. And Shia just forgets about it and talks to him about some pussy. You understand that he just threw away a perfectly good ball, right? Like, you're never getting that back. That shit's definitely stolen by now. Like, what a waste. Spooner goes to his grandma, eats some pie, then he leaves and sees a robot running away with a purse so he goes hold my pie sir hold it or wear it just put it on the damn ground you retard it's not like he's gonna wait for you it's not like you're gonna come back for it anyway doesn't matter he runs after the robot jumps down some stairs and catches it and it drops a purse then we see this lady take her asthma inhaler out of it and takes a hit and he'd be like this your purse of course this is my purse asshole i left my inhaler at home he went to go get it for me wait then why didn't you send him to only get back the inhaler be specific did you forget the whole purse at home or just the inhaler because that's the difference between being called a dumb fat old hoe and just a fat old hoe anyway she'd be like you lucky i can't breathe or i'd walk all up and down your ways so will pisses off to work and his boss fudgehead guy gives him some shit about trying to arrest robot because ain't nobody in the history of ever crime ever never tried to fucking uh what what am i saying because ain't no robot in the history of ever never has committed a crime ever in history then spoons gets a call like yo you know what they call when a gay dude dies a homicide So he goes to investigate the death of Steve Jobs, this famous robot maker scientist dude who left him a hologram of himself that can help him in solving his case, which Will keeps asking questions to, but it keeps going, I'm sorry, my responses are limited, you must ask the right questions. So since it looks like a suicide, he asks him, why'd you kill yourself? And he goes, that detective is the right question. Then fucking answer it, bitch, instead of just going back to your fucking coin. Will goes up to Lawrence Stroll, the boss of United States retards, and he doesn't like him because robots and stuff, like, screw you and your robots, motherfucker. Fuck you, dude, our robots are better slaves than you ever were. Did you, I know he didn't, did you just try and give slavery a fucking Yelp review, you goddamn imbecile. So Spoon goes down with this uptight hoe to investigate Steve Jobs, aka Dr. Lanning's lab slash living quarters type of place. You know, you feel me? It's like, you look at it, you'll get it. And she introduces him to Vicky, the all-knowing, all-seeing supercomputer in charge of the USR and all his security and shit. Terrible idea. She's pretty much like Gladys from Portal. Anyway, he goes in and starts detectiving the place and immediately calls bullshit on this being a suicide because no way an old dude can break through a reinforced safety glass and the video feed from inside the room was corrupted for some reason. And Dr. Calvin Klein was telling him that he was going a bit cuckoo at the end of his lifetime. Also, Hollow Lanning specifically asked for him to investigate his death so he gives it a big think and guesses that whoever killed Dr. Lanning must be a robot and must still be in this room with them and he starts looking around for it and she'd be like man you el poco loco a robot could never do this because it interferes with the three laws oh you're right I gotta fucking explain the three laws god damn it okay all right pay attention cunts law one don't hurt human law two always listen to human except if you're gonna hurt human law three always protect yourself unless you're fucking with law one or two then it's okay to kill yourself back to story while having some back and forth between the laws and what they do and what they mean all that crap and then as five pops up and and Will's cop training must have been awful because his grip on that gun is looser than my grasp on reality. It flies out of his hand, Robot gets a hold of it, but he got another one. So Robot flees for his life jumping out of the suicide hole, but Spoon shoots him in the leg and hits an artery or hose or whatever. Then superhero landing, it gets away, Spoon's like, where is it going bitch, where? Ho figures it's going to one of their factories to go repair itself. So they make their way over there too in his 180 mile an hour car, which he takes manual control over. And she'd be like, what the fuck you doing dumb ho? I agree with the female, Will. Average human reactions and judgments are simply not fast enough for this type of speed at extended periods of time. Besides, all other vehicles on the road most likely have autopilot on as well. Maybe they're even all connected to each other knowing where each one of them is so they can avoid each other. So just let your car do its thing, diggity dog. Anyway, she thinks that the robot was somehow defective or protecting them in some way or form. Form or way. Wait, I can't speak. They get to the facility where there are no humans, it's just robots building robots and it's fully automated. There's not even a single fucking human in it. Well, that's just stupid. Fucking A right it is, Spoonie. So there are supposed to be a thousand robots there, but actually there's a thousand and one. So there's an imposter among them. Oh my gosh, lads, it's an Among Us reference. Wow. Fuck you. So so Spooner tells all the robots to stand still and not move and he randomly starts busting caps in the asses using scare tactics to find the imposter which kind of works because blue eyes white dragon flinches and Will sees this so he goes after him but loses him again then gets surprise attack thrown around. By the way how the tit shit fuck did blue eyes find a space to stand and hide him? Because he either have to push one robot out the way to take his place or completely shift the whole row or column by one space so he could make space for himself and hide which would totally reveal where he was so this is kind of bullshit. Anyway robot throws him around he's like what am I? <laughs> Then he tries to escape, but the backup spoon called for earlier arrived, and Blue Eyes tried to spider monkey around. They all have Stormtrooper aim, but he eventually gets taken down and taken back to the precinct. Yeah, precinct. And Spoon gets five minutes of interrogation time with the bot, and bot's like, "What's that thing you did with your eye?" Oh, that? It's because me and my boss are gay lovers. Also, it signifies trust. Then interrogation happens, and Spoon shows him some pics of Dead Landing, which is kind of like his dad, and he keeps asking him why he killed him. So bot's like, "I did not murder him." Experiencing real life anger, like he has human emotions or something. Then he tells him his name. His name is Sonny, and he tells him that Doctor Landing killed himself, and that. 
he asked him to do a favor for him before he died. Then Spoon's five minutes gets cut short because the suits are here. Obviously, Lawrence wants to keep this shit on the hushy hushy side of things because Killer Robot doesn't sound too good now, does it for his fucking company? And they're able to take Sonny away because he's USR property, so Will goes to a bar to drink and be annoyed. Muffinhead joins him and accidentally gives him the motivation to go on and continue this investigation. Boom, that rhymed. So Spoon pays for the booze and leaves. Oh my god, $46 for three beers. How does anybody afford anything in this movie? Alright, so he goes to Dr. Lanning's old house, which is scheduled to be demolished at 8 a.m. tomorrow by this destruction robot. I don't know why it's scheduled to be demolished, but it is, whatever. He goes inside and watches a video in Dr. Lanning's office about ghosts in the program, basically code that has a mind of its own, which sounds like a bunch of hooey bullshit to me, but who cares? He then meets Dr. Lanning's cat and the demolition robot has its demolition time change from 8 p.m. to a.m. Wait, no, other way around, a.m. to p.m. That's important because that means it's gonna go start killing him now, okay? Which it does, it starts demolishing the house with him inside, so he goes and grabs the kitty and runs through the house while it's falling apart, like that scene in parts of the Caribbean, and he runs for the door, shoots off the hinges, and then goes surfing in the USA. But hold on just a second, you're telling me that while running at full chat through a collapsing building, he has good enough aim to shoot the hinges off a fucking door, but when a robot is jumping away from him in a straight line, he can barely graze his leg? You can lick my ass hair, movie. Also, his car doesn't get a single scratch from this. Whatever, he goes to Calvin and tells her what happened, but she's still adamant that the machines are just randomly malfunctioning, and he sees her new NS5 downloading hentai off the internet. So he takes her aside, telling her that Lanning was being kept prisoner at the end of his life, and he's trying to send him messages with all the shit that's happening right now. But she gets mad at him, like, you're delusional, robots are good. No, they're not, you stupid cum snorter. Get out of my house, you fresh prince of bullshit. I was leaving anyway, thought. Next morning, while Smythe has a memory nightmare, memory nightmare, memory nightmare, wakes up to see the new NS5s replacing the old NS4s, even his Nana got one, and he mad about that, he don't like that, okay? So he continues to watch Dr. Landing videos while Calvin gives Sonny a rectal exam, and he keeps saying shit like, I was dreaming, are you gonna kill me? I think it'd be better not to die, and she's all like, uh, this is weird, uh -huh. Now back to Spoon, he driving and still investigating when he sees two Goomobiles carrying NS5s come and box him in in a tunnel where we see yet another example of road in movie with zero traffic, whatever. The things open up and NS5 starts jumping onto his car trying to kill him like you're experiencing an accident. You're being saved. Do not resist. But he's like the hell I am and starts fighting them off and goes through this uh what's it, this like space, this free space on the side and does a super spin move to get them off. Then the two Goomobiles crash and so does he. Then one armless NS5 that has survived tries to throw his car at him. Why lengthways and not sideways to make it hard for him to avoid the car? Why are futuristic robots so fucking retarded bro? They fight each other, robot uses circus acrobatics as a fight move, then we find out that Spoon's left arm is a cyborg arm, and he starts fighting back, but then the cops start coming, so the robot sprints away like Two sides, bad ass. Cops are here in Soul's Muffin Head, and he thinks that Spoon's going crazy like Give me your badge, fucking take it bitch, I don't care, I don't fucking Do I look like I care? Do I look like I care? Then Calvin finds out that Sonny's super unique, he has two brains or some shit, and can't be controlled by Vicky. So she goes over to Spoon's house while he's spray painting his skin back on with this movie science paint cap. She tells him that Sonny has the three laws, but he can choose not to obey them, so he's like, all right, I'm gonna get dressed, and we go and interview him. And she finds out that he got some cyborg parts in him, so she goes to feel him up, and finds out that basically, his entire left side of his body got nuked, all right? And he tells her the story of what happened. Goes like this, uh, some truck driver fell asleep at the wheel, hit a car, the guy in the car fucking died, that car hit Will's car, and they both went skinny dipping in the fucking water. Then a robot came along and tried to save Will Smith, instead of saving the 12-year-old daughter of the dude that died in the first car, despite numerous attempts from Will to tell him to save the girl instead of him, but it didn't listen because he calculated that he had a higher chance of surviving than she did, and now Will hates robots, boohoo. Truck driver fell asleep at the wheel? Shouldn't self-driving vehicles be widespread technology in this movie? And long-haul truck driving will probably be the first instances of the human element being removed completely because of human error, like this very example? Then how the fuck does this crap even happen? Just seems kind of hard for me to believe if I'm honest. In fact, if the self-driving truck malfunctioned and caused the whole crash story, that would be much better because he'd have more reason to hate robots then. Missed opportunity movie, missed opportunity. Anyway, Will Smith be like, any human would have known he should have shaved her f Shaved? Not, not shaved. Not shaved. No, no, no. Any human would have known that he should have saved her first. That was someone's baby. Yeah, but so are you, my sweet prince. So are you. Then Spoon and Calvin Klein go to his garage, open it up, and take his sporty bike out and go for a ride. Two things on this, by the way. One, he's a cop and his garage code is 911. Are you fucking mental, bruv? That's stupid unsecure. And two, please tell me this doesn't run on gas. Gas explodes, you know. And so does pretty much everything else. What's your point here, dumb bitch? Whatever, they go to Sonny to ask him about his dreams because Spoon thinks Lennon gave Sonny dreams so he can leave him clues about what happened. So he draws him this dream. Security comes because Spoon's not allowed in the building and they take him up to Lawrence. Will Smith is a strong, intimidating badass, but dipshit McQueetard, who knows that Sonny can ignore the three laws, is saying shit like how one bad robot and a crazy cop can't let them hurt sales and they're gonna have to do a lot of recalls and shit and whatever. So Detective Spork lets out this gem. 
I'm sorry, I'm allergic to bullshit. Get fucked, idiot. Lawrence of Arabia says they're gonna have to get rid of Sunny, so Clavin Klang says, okay, I'll destroy him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shouldn't you at least try and turn him off and on again? Doesn't matter. Will gets escorted out of the building, and Sunny gets prepped to have nanites injected into his brain, which is basically the equivalent of giving computers hyper AIDS brain cancer in this movie. And while that's happening, Will Smith goes over to the dilapidated Golden Gate Bridge where all the waters is dried up and they keep all the old robots there. Wait, the Golden Gate Bridge is in San Francisco, right? But it goes over Lake Michigan? I'm getting something very wrong here, aren't I? Doesn't matter. He opens up Lenny's hologram again to ask us some questions, and the last question he asks gets the same response as before that detective is the right question then it shuts down just answer the fucking question jesus christ you had enough time and privacy to make all these pre-recorded messages without being caught by whoever the fuck is watching you by the end of your life but you couldn't just record a message explaining what the fuck was going on not even the answer to this very right question a fucking dickhead anyway sonny gets brain cancer and spoon notices something fishy going on with the storage containers it turns out that the new ns5s are committing genocide on the old ns4s and they see him and try to attack him but the old ns4s keep protecting him so he can get away safely then while running away he calls calvin who's in the shower so it goes to a loudspeaker voicemail thing like Calvin, you won't believe what's happening. We are so and she sees this robot fishiness and the robot goes wrong number ma'am and she goes holy shit that is not good at all and everything starts going tits up for the city and probably the world also a bunch of goo mobiles start releasing hostile ns5 telling humans to go home but humans don't take shit from nobody and start fighting all the lights in the city go out except for the usr lights ns5 start attacking the cops the military and navy and whatever can't do shit because they all have usr contracts and robots and stuff they won't even allow mima to go to service this is just the worst man also calvin's robo slave won't let her leave either and she's telling him to shut down but it won't listen so it too can ignore the three laws just like sunny but then spoon bursts through the door and Unleashes a storm of bullets into this robo bitch. Then they make their way over to the USR building while Will helps out Shia the booth and showcases how good his aim can be when he wants to look really cool in unaimable situations. They get to the USR building and get inside using the unsurveilled service routes. Why are the service routes unsurveilled? What fucking numbskull designed this security system? Whatever though, it's for movie convenience. Who cares? They get inside and find out that Sonny is still alive. She couldn't kill him because he's too damn unique, so she switched him out with a dud and she basically fried an empty shell. When though? Because bad NS5's eyes are pea yellow, Sonny's eyes are blue, and his eyes, right as he was nutting himself into non existence, were great. So I'm guessing unprocessed NS5s, which are the empty shells, have gray eyes. But when he was strapped in for that nice dose of brain cancer, his eyes were still blue and still very much acting like Sunny. So tell me, lady, when exactly and how exactly did you make the switch when you were being observed by both Vicky and Lawrence? Whatever, who cares? It fucking happened. Let's go on. They go up over 2,000 flights of stairs to Lawrence's office. They didn't even break a sweat. Wow. Anyway, they thought he was behind this, but he wasn't behind this. He was behind the desk being choked to death, and pff, he's dead now. Then Spoon Dude opens the third eye and figures out that Vicky is behind all of this shit. So he calls for her, and she shows up saying that humans are retarded, waging war and doing stupid shit, killing the earth, blah blah blah, and they can't be charged with their own safety, so her understanding of the three laws has evolved, saying that to protect humanity, some of you bitches gotta die and something is gonna be surrounded me. Then Sonny, who's supposed to be created by Lenny to stop all this shit and to be the Jesus of NS5s, is like, yes, I understand now, your logic is undeniable. Switches sides and holds a gun to Calvin's head, but then gives a quick wink to Spoon, and he'd be like, oh, he gay too? Pride month! They pull the old razzle dazzle on Vicky and destroy the bad NS5s, then they run away and decide to go to Vicky's brain to give her brain cancer like they're about to give Sonny. So the Scooby gang splits up, Sonny goes to get the nanites while the other two go to her brain open her brain hatch to inject the nanites into the brain they can't inject it here for some reason they can only inject it into the brain directly or through this hatch she tries to open the hatch by hacking the access panel or some shit but then vicky blocks her so spoon goes <laughs> Fuck you, this works, Will Smith. Fuck you to the nth degree, Buster. Anyway, Sonny gets to his deathbed lab and throws a bad bot through the force field that's protecting the nanites. And Vicky goes, your actions are futile. I'm not disabling the security field. Don't worry, bitch. I'm built different. See, Daddy Lennon gave him some extra thick level 100 armor in anticipation for this very event. So he loads up the nanites and unless the vial holding the nanites is also built different, then it's never getting out of this force field. Just saying. We're gonna pretend it is, though. Security has been breached and Vicky sends up all the NS5 protecting the building up to kill the fucking two humans up there. It starts raining men and they engage in combat. Meanwhile, Sonny is running back, dealing with his own heat, doing tornado spin moves and dislocating heads, scorpion monkey bullshit, busting skulls open, you know, epic shit. And he arrives there just as the evil NS5s are about to drop Calvin to her death, so Spoon gives him the direct order to save Calvin instead of giving Vicky brain cancer. And he listens, throws the nanites in the air, and Dolphin dives down to Calvin to save her with this very convenient wire. You know he's a super strong robot, right? He could have just done some giga check calculations to calculate the trajectory and force needed to throw that bitch like a spear directly at Vicky's brain, infecting her from where he stood, but instead he opted to set up the school stunt with Will, where he jumps out to grab the shot of cancer AIDS, then skydives close enough to the wire or brain stem, whatever the fuck this shit is, and grabs onto it to slow himself down with the cyborg arm, getting it destroyed in the process, to end up at her brain and give her the nanites, where she keeps repeating, my logic is undeniable. My logic is undeniable. Shut the fuck up, you stupid piece of shit trash can. The glowy lines blow up, the lights come back, God, the NS5s reset, and they get taken away. Turns out Sonny did kill Landing, and the promise he made him was to do it and not tell anyone about it, saying, He made me swear before he tell me what it is he wanted me to do. That's a rookie mistake, Sonny boy. You're a fucking idiot. Anyway, because they friends now, Spoon doesn't arrest him over a technicality and Sonny becomes Jesus. This movie gets 10 USSRs out of 11 limited edition Shrek Crocs.